What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 7 of our data analysis with Python and Pandas tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be talking about is really building our data set but also pickling will be kind of the subject of this uh, video. So uh, reverting back to the code from Python 4, uh, we're going to start with that code. If you have that code lying around, pick it up. Otherwise, you can go to the link in the description and there will be your starting code uh, for this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that code, come over here, paste, bring this up, uh, and this was the, the starting code basically. So if you don't recall, what this did was it visited um, the Wikipedia page for the states of the United States and automatically generated that little ticker basically that we need to query Quandl for the data frame of the housing price index by state. So we're going to close this out and uh, we'll come over here and we don't really need to necessarily print this out. Uh, we could do it just so we know where we are along the list, but it's not necessary. Now what we're going to say is instead of print that information, we'll just say uh, that's the query. So query equals that. Then we're going to say the data frame is equal to uh, quandle.get. We want to get that query, and then our auth token will be equal to um, our API key. Now, what we're going to be doing here is, like we were saying in the previous tutorial, or really previous two, um, the way that we're going to combine all these data frames into one big data frame is with join. So join makes the most sense because these are coming, these data frames are coming through. They have an index already assigned. It's the date index, and that is exactly what we want to share all this data on. So using join makes the most sense in this case. So the way that we're going to be able to do this is for every time we have a data frame, we join it with the existing data frame uh, that has all the other information. But if we don't have an existing data frame, there's nothing to join to. So first what we want to do is we're going to add a new uh, variable here, and we're just going to say main df. Main df is going to be equal to pd.dataframe. It's just a data frame. There's really no information in that data frame. It's just an empty data frame. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say if main underscore df dot empty. What this is is the boolean, and it's going to return a true or false. If the data frame is empty, then what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say main dot df equals df. Else, we're going to say uh, main df equals main underscore df dot join df. So if it's empty, i.e. if this is the first data frame, we're going to say, okay, the main df is equal to data frame, whatever that data frame is. Then, if it's not empty, that means we already have some housing price index values in there. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a dot join of the current data frame. Easy enough. Now, uh, once we do that, cool, at the very end of this, we will have a data frame. So let's do print. Uh, and let's do print main underscore df dot head. And let's just make sure that works. So we'll run that and uh, whoops, main underscore df, not main dot df. My mistake. Let's try again. Uh, we're not really printing out. I wanted to print out that the query at the point so we knew where we were along the line, but we'll I guess wait a moment and hopefully it'll come up. While we wait, we'll be talking about um, how can we get around this wait time. So with pandas, <laughs> there's a few things we could do. One, we could output the data frame to a CSV or something to save it, and then bring it back into a data frame via loading a CSV. Now, uh, this is a pandas tutorial, so that's totally, I suppose, acceptable, but this is also a data analysis tutorial series. And with data analysis, you might not always have the option to output to a CSV, then input back from a CSV into a data frame or whatever data type you're using. Um, pause for a moment on that note. And here we have all of the data. We've truncated some of the columns as we can see here, but sure enough, that worked. We've got everything. It's indexed by the same date and all that. So everything has worked to this point, but obviously that took about 30 seconds and it might have taken you longer depending on your internet connection as well as sometimes I have seen Quandle go down. So anyway, closing this out. Um, so 
what we want to do is, so with pandas, yes, we could save that to a CSV, and then whenever we want to reference that data in the future, we could just import it from the CSV. But uh, there's probably a better option, and that would be pickling. So pickling, luckily for us, <laughs> there are two ways that you can pickle with pandas. One is with the default. Uh, Python, in general, has a uh, standard library pickle module. So that would be import pickle. And then also there is a pandas to pickle and from pickle. So we'll be talking about well, how those differ in a moment. But first we're going to show how to use pickles. So the idea of a pickle is to save any Python object. So that would be a variable. That would be a dictionary. That would be a list. That would be a pandas data frame. That would be a machine learning classifier. Okay, all kinds of stuff. A trained machine learning classifier, I'd say. Um, that's a lot of stuff, man. Uh, so you can, you can pickle that, and what it does is it serializes and saves the byte stream, basically, or the byte code, and then you can load it back in, and it has all of the attributes. So if you pickle a data frame, when you load that data frame back in, you can still do you know the df.head and all that kind of stuff. The data is there and everything. So it's kind of a way to save your objects. That way, you don't have to run through this massive list every time you want to... Um, have that data. Now again, I realize with pandas you could save to CSV and then load from CSV or text or whatever you wanted to do. Um, but like with a machine learning classifier, for example, you, you can't really do that. <laughs> okay, so you're going to have to save it somehow and pickle is how we do it. So first let's show pickle. Let's just show a real quick example of what we can do uh, with pickle. But um, before we do that, let's go ahead and kind of organize this code. This code's kind of a mess. So first, let's do uh, define state underscore list empty parameters here. And uh, we'll do 50 states equals that. And then we'll just return. We'll return 50 states. And then we'll return 50 states like this. right? So copy this, paste. We return 50 states 0, 0, 001 colon. So that's all the states. It just returns the list of states. Then what we're going to do is we're going to define a new function here, and we're going to say define grab underscore initial underscore state underscore data. That's a new thing too. We'll take this, tab it over, and then what we're going to say is um, we'll leave that main DF. We're going to say states equals state underscore list. So there's your states for abbreviation in states here. We run through there, and we go ahead and um, at least we can print the main DF dot head if you want. But what we're going to do now is come down here. And we're going to say pickle underscore out equals open. And we're going to open 50 underscore states dot pickle with the intention to write bytes. So WB for write bytes. Then we're going to do pickle dot dump. We're going to dump that data frame uh, to the pickle out file. And then, of course, we need to do pickle out dot close because it was opened and, and written to. So... Uh, there you have how you would pickle the data. So now we'll just run this function once. So copy that, paste. We'll run that. That'll take a, a, you know about 30 seconds again. But this time that will be the you know last time we we need to do that because now it'll be serialized and then we can just load in that pickled data. So uh, when that's all done, we can we can load it in. We won't actually have to run that again and, and query Quandle 50 times. Uh, for the data. So uh, now that that's done, let me pull this over. Sure enough, there's our 50 states got pickle. Now this is pretty meaningless if you open this up and try to look at it, right? It's bytecode information. So it's not really going to do anything for you. Uh, close this out, move this over, and now what we're going to do is we don't need to grab initial state data anymore. Comment that out. What we're going to do now is we could say uh, pickle underscore in <clears throat> equals open, and we're going to basically, let's just copy and paste this. Copy, paste, instead of write bytes, read bytes. Then we're going to say hpi underscore data equals pickle dot load, and we want to load this pickle in. Now we can print hpi, whoops, hpi data like so. 
and there you go. Okay, so there's your data. You have 462 rows and 50 columns. There's all your columns. Everything is retained. Okay, so you have all the columns. The column is by the uh, state ticker, you know, or state uh, abbreviation rather. Okay, so that's how we were doing that, um, and that's that. Okay, so so the data is in, and now we're well, we have that data instantly, so we don't have to load 30 seconds every time. Now, like I was saying, uh, Pandas has its own pickling methodology, okay? And some people are curious as to why Pandas made their own little pickle functionality. Uh, apparently, on a really big data set, it's faster if you use Pandas version. Um, never seen that be the case, but apparently... But I will say that to pickle in and out with um, with Pan or Python's default version, basically you have to have six lines, right? So that's kind of lame. You could, of course, do I suppose like with open blah 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 as this, then you could dump. It. But either way, and you could skip this. So you could do it in four lines if you wrote really nice code. But oh, so it's four lines anyway. But now with Py or with Pandas version, what you can do is you can basically do it, you can pickle out and back in in two lines. So what we'll do is we've already saved this pickle, we've loaded back in the pickle as HPI data. Now with, with pandas' version, you could say HPI data dot two underscore pickle, and we'll just save this out as, I don't know, uh, pickle dot pickle. <laughs> and that's it, right? That sends it to the pickle. Okay, then you can load it back in with HPI underscore data two uh, equals PD dot read underscore pickle, and then you just specify that name. We're going to bring in pickle pickle, and that's it, right? So you can output an input with one line rather than three lines, or in theory, you could try to do it with two lines. But anyway, um, so at least half of the lines, and now we'll print. And there's supposedly it's faster this way, but I, like I said, it's negligible for sure. Uh, depending, unless you're doing maybe you know astronomical data. Literally, you're doing astronomical data. <laughs> anyway, um, same thing. Okay, so we obviously we already printed it up here, but um, that works too. So again, uh, that's pickling, and also aside from pickling, also we grabbed all the data frames. We you know kind of taught you pickling but also shoved in creating a data set that now contains the uh, housing price index data for all 50 states <laughs> with using join which we just learned in the previous tutorial so anyways uh, that's that that's uh, pickling and as well as uh, joining all this data together uh, in the next tutorial what we're going to be talking about is some of the statistics that we can do uh, with pandas so pandas comes action packed with tons of calculations and kind of some, some some basic data analysis stuff that we can do right out of the gate without really coding anything ourselves. So in the next tutorial we'll be talking about correlation and stuff like that. Uh, and we can see, because like I was saying, with the housing price index in general, we're kind of under the, under the assumption that all housing price indexes will follow each other very closely. So in the next tutorial we'll talk about how we can confirm or um, you know, basically prove false that theory. So that's what you guys have to look forward to. Questions, comments, concerns, suggestions below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.